day you blessed us to see. We thank you how you woke us up this morning in our right mind with a mind to worship you, whether we come in person or whether we just worshiping you in our own home. Father, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem today. We definitely pray for them. We also pray for the United States of America, Father. We pray for men and women of integrity. Oh, Father, you know our heart's desire today. We pray for the unsaved loved ones, oh God, in the precious name of Jesus. We pray for those who are battling addictions of any kind today, Lord. Oh, God, we pray for the depressed today, Lord. We pray for those that go and give them comfort in your word, in the precious name of Jesus. We pray for believers all over this world, God, in the precious name of Jesus. We pray that our faith fell us not at this time, God, because we know that you are yet in control, and we give you praise for that. We pray for our schools, our children that are going, our children that are online, Lord. We thank you for making a way that they still can receive their education. Father, we thank you for all those who desire to be out and worship today, but for whatever reason they can't, but we thank you for it anyway, Father. And then we pray for the body of Christ, for those who are called by your name, Lord. We pray for them that their faith fail not in this time, oh God. We thank you for our pastor, Bishop Simmons, and his lovely wife, Minister Cynthia Simmons. We pray for all of our associate elders and all of those that have a desire to fellowship with New Life in Christ Ministries. Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and honor, because it's due unto you and you only. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we're going to have our scripture read by Deaconess Carolyn Alexander. Also, she will be doing our vision for New Life in Christ Ministries. Good morning, and praise the Lord, everybody. Our vision for New Life in Christ Ministries. For in the name of Jesus, we come into your presence thanking you for New Life in Christ Ministries. You have called us to be saints in Franklin Township and around the world. As we lift our voices in one accord, we recognize that you are God and everything was made by and for you. We call into being those things that be not as though they were. We thank you that we all speak the same thing. There is no division among us. We are perfectly joined together in the same mind. Grant unto us, your representatives here, a boldness to speak your word, which you will confirm with signs following. We thank you that we have workmen in abundance in all manner of cunning people for every manner of work. Each department operates in excellence of ministry and intercessions. We have in our church the ministry gifts for the edifying of this body, so we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and to a mature person. None of our members will be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. We speak the truth in love. We are a growing and witnessing body of believers, becoming great in number and strong. We have every need met. Therefore, we meet the needs of people who come spirit, soul, and body. We ask for the wisdom of God in meeting these needs. Father, we thank you for the ministry facilities that will more than meet the needs of the ministry. You have called unto us. We have every need. Our church is prospering financially, and we have more than enough to meet every situation. We have everything we need to carry out your great commission and reach the community of Jesus. We are a people of love, as love is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. We thank you that the word of God is given big in all of us, and Jesus is Lord. We are a supernatural church composed of supernatural people doing supernatural things. For we are laborers together with God. 
We thank you for your presence among us. And we lift our hands and praise your holy name. Amen. Thank God. We thank God for the reading and the hearing of his word. We're going to continue on our scripture coming from Psalms 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy, because he has turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The courts of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, has delivered us from death, our eyes from tears, our feet from stumbling, that we may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. We thank God for the reading and the hearing of his word. At this time, we're in the hands of Dignus Gaines. Amen. Supernatural people doing supernatural things. Thank God. You know what to do. Call on the name of the Lord. At this time, we are so blessed to be favored with the selection from our own missionary, Cheryl Stevens, accompanied by our very own minister, Wesley Simmons. God bless you, missionary and minister. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Jesus said, here I stand. Won't you please let me in? And you said, I will tomorrow. Jesus said, I am he who supplies all your needs. And you said, I know, but tomorrow, tomorrow, I give my life tomorrow. I thought about today oh but it's so much easier to say tomorrow who promised you tomorrow better choose the Lord today for tomorrow
forget about tomorrow. Won't you give your life today? today. Don't let today slip away because tomorrow is not promised to you. So if you're standing at the crossroads today, whether you should receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, stand no more. Accept the Lord today and he'll be everything you need to get you through this season and any season. Amen. Amen. At this time we're preparing our hearts to hear the word of God. Coming from this young man, great teacher, yet he breaks it down on your level so you can understand and receive what this man of God have to say. So at this time, we're going to ask that you receive. We thank God for all of you that are out here this morning. So we're going to ask that you stand to receive the man of God in the person of Elder Freddie Alexander. And we remind you, it's not, we're not standing because of Elder Fred, but we're standing because of the God that's in Elder Fred Alexander. Amen. So we're going to say it with a hearty three amens. Amen. God bless Elder Fred. Amen. God bless Elder Freddie Alexander. Amen. God bless Elder Freddie Alexander. God bless you. All right, they sound it like they mean it, Elder Freddie Alexander. Come on. Uh, they know I need it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for all y'all that we're able to have another day and everything. Father God, as we come before you right now, let us decrease and you increase, Lord. Father God, let us be able to speak your word, well, unadulterated word of God. As you put your word in my mouth, oh, Heavenly Father, give me the boldness that I need to uncover the mystery of your gospel. Father God, I thank you for each and every one that are here, that are online, on TV or wherever, Father God, in the name of Jesus. As your word go forth, we ask that it, we know it's going to be blessed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tomorrow, you'll be blessed. Tomorrow, we bless today. We bless right now. Because God is in a blessing business. But I thank God that if I live tomorrow, I get a new blessing. Just like he give us new mercy, grace and mercy every morning. I, you know, it's, I, I, I've been, like I say, that it's something about what's going on now. I mean, it's been going on, but now I like just really touching it here because, I mean, we can't do nothing, but you can't do nothing but sit there and watch the news and hear what's going on. And to, just to see and to know that the fire that is happening, the, the, water, the water, the flooding. See the people don't have food. See the food line. No job. No house. Don't even know how they're going to get a house. Depending on the government, the government ain't doing nothing for them. It ain't like they want, don't want to be done nothing. Don't want to do nothing, but they can't do nothing. 
because the governor, one who let this coronavirus come in and do mess everybody up. When they call themselves trying to stop it so it don't show the economy get good, it messed around and come and got worse than ever been. Because we had to deal what needed to be done, we wouldn't be through all it. We'd be out of this. Other countries is home, going about their business. And we still got to wait for a new president so we can get it done right. But God got it all in control. He have it in control. That's why when we look around and see everything going on, we got to trust God. We got to understand. You know, I was thinking the other week when the people... I've just thought, kept on my mind all week when the two kids sitting there trying to get Wi-Fi at the at the wall. I mean, at the uh, store, and the people call in on them because they're sitting out there, but they're doing the best that they could. It's like all the time we as people, when we okay, we had like you know we forget about how people how you had to come on when you had to come in your struggles. They don't realize that people. So what? We you might be doing good, but people are struggling. That ain't, like I said, it ain't like they want to be struggling, but it just happened. With things, with things going now, we got so many hurricanes this time. Now, they didn't can't give American name no more. You got to change it over to Greek. I'm like, what? How I gonna change something to Greek? We, I can't. I don't know no Greek. But it's a tornado. It's a tornado. Why you just can't say a tornado then? Tell myself we got to put it over to Greek. We can't use American name no more. I say, what's going on here? Then I look and see a fire where it's burning. I mean, I'm thinking about, hey, I see Shaq, Rat, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm like, God, come on. What's going on? I say, and then now we got winter, and winter ain't even come yet. Now we got the colds and stuff. Now you hear somebody sniffing the first day, you're going to look at them. Well, you better go get checked. Before you get a call, oh, hey, bro, you know, now, uh-uh. Get a stay away. Oh, I know, but a little cold. You ain't no doctor. Go to the doctor. Let me know if you're okay. If you say you're okay, you're okay. But if you don't, I'm away from you. What's your faith, preacher? In God. That's what my faith is. My faith is in God. And God told me to be a shrewd and cunning steward over his storehouse. And his storehouse is this body. Even though I know it don't look like I took care of it, but I did the best I could <laughs> with what I had and with what I got. And I thank God for it. I thank God I can still walk with it. May not, I can't run like I used to. I can't eat. Sometimes my memory, I got a memory. I had, I had a photographic memory one time, I thought. Now, Lord, I put stuff down and look around and forget what I did with it. Or I take a walk and say, well, where am I going? I'm in the house. I've been in the house almost 30 years. I'm supposed to be able to know where I'm going with no doubt, with no problem. I'm like, what's going on here? I remember mean, my wife would always tell me, like, um, hon, why don't you get the kid, the grandkids, you know, come over and do so-and-so. Nah, I got it. I got it. I don't need no, I'm, I'm okay. I can do this. Huh. Now nah, ask me what I do. <laughs> hey, uh, you ain't do doing anything today? <laughs> okay, come on over here. I, we got a little work for you. You know, but, but that's how it goes on, but that's what happened. You know, but that, mm, mm. I ain't give y'all a title there. We was everywhere else. I'll tell you what the title gonna be. Look it, look it up. Look it up. See, so you got to look up, not down. When you look up, you see Jesus. When you look up, you see the stars and the moon. You see his miracles and wonders. You see the power. And when I say look up, I mean spiritual time. Your spirit eye, not, not with your natural eye. Because when you look up with your spiritual, natural eye, all you see is a cloud. Maybe a plane here and there. Or some trees or whatever. But in the spiritual eye, I was sitting out back the other day when God gave me that. I was looking up. And as I was looking up, I'm looking at the skies. I'm looking up. I went past the trees. I thought about David when he, he told him about don't fight no right now. Wait till you go 
to the tree in the mar 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 marberry tree when they start when the wind start blowing, they didn't get get the rolling. I was sitting down looking up, and the top of the trees in my yard they was going, but no other the bottom wasn't even moving, just the top. I said, "Wow!" And as I looked on up, I looked on up and kept looking, and then I started looking with a spiritual eye. And when I looked up there, I seen Jesus sitting at the right hand throne of the Father, saying unto me, come unto me, all ye are heaven laden, and I'll give you rest. So I said, I said, okay, that's good. Look up. Because when you look down, you see your troubles. When you look down, you see if you're having problems with your wife or your husband, your children, your job, your friend, your neighbors. You see you don't have. When you look at other people, you see what they have and see you don't have. You start looking down. When you look down, you start getting depressed. Start feeling like you, don't, like you can't do it. You start doubting. But when we look up, now I'm not saying... Look up like somebody like you, like you all that. Like you got your nose up in the air. When I'm telling you to look up, I'm telling you to look in the word of God. That's what I'm telling you. Because if you look in the word, you keep your mind stayed on Jesus, he'll keep you in perfect peace. How I keep my mind stayed on God? How? Reading the word. Looking at it. Looking it up. Looking up scriptures. Looking up passage and whatever I need to do and how to do it. Look it up something to see where that don't sound right to me. But you look it up and you'll find the word. He'll tell you what you need to know. He'll show you what you got to do. And he'll show you where you got to go. And look at it. It's it only because of God's blessing that we're here today. We had to be. You could have been other places. Or you couldn't even been here at all. We got a lot of people who went to sleep last night. Woke up, to, uh, when they went to sleep, thought they going to wake up. But when they turn around, when they didn't wake up. You know, I think about how, um, as I was going on in life, and I always said I was like the rock of the road, and I ain't getting sick, I ain't getting that. Boy, you can't wait. I can't wait to go to the doctor. <laughs> Make sure everything is fine. I need him now. Ain't no such thing. All the people who can go, you go. Don't try to use that. I ain't got to go because I'm right. No, you better go. Because that's what they got them here for. And remember, I told you, look up. So when I first start, we're going to go two places. But we're going to have two verses that we want to hear it on. And then we're going to go to another verse in Psalm. We're going to stay in Psalm. Amen? And we're going to hit right here. Psalm. Look up. 121. I will lift up my eyes into the hills for which cometh my help. See, we got to understand that you ain't, your help come from the Lord. We got to understand that we can't do nothing on our own. It's almost like the Israelites. They thought that they could do what they want to do. They didn't give God the glory that were doing to his name. So they thought that they could go out and fight. But how you going to fight when you don't know how to fight? You got to trust somebody. That's why they had to, you got to look up, you got to lift up your eyes and what's coming to your help. Which we know our help comes from the Lord. If you're a Christian, you know the word, the help comes from the Lord. For the joy of the Lord is what? My strength. That's right. So if that's me, if I'm weak, I look to him. If I'm sick, I look to him. If I'm depressed, 
I look to him. I get my face started welding a little bit. I look to his word, look to him. That's what we have to do. You got to learn to look for him. Look at his word. Look for him. He, look, he can be found. He can be found. He, that's one thing about God. He ain't hiding. He ain't hiding from nobody. He ain't like us. Bill collected calls. Don't answer the phone. This is not going to do. Oh, no answer. Go to the store. You see somebody. Oh, go this way. Not God. Wherever you at. If he there, he see you. And he let you know, do he here? Do he there for a while? Because he's out of strength. And they say, my help coming from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. My help coming from the Lord. Your help coming from the Lord. If you're a believer, I know we'll say that. You know, that's where you get your help from. But then I know that God still watches over you because he gave us a chance to get it right with him. Because if he didn't give us a chance, we'd all be messed up. I know I will. I know I was. I thought I was right, though, D. But I found out the more I read and study, I understand. I was bad. I was bad off. I was headed straight to hell. And I definitely, you with this fire that they got going now, and it's going, it, it, and they say it's, it's, it's hot and stuff is so hot, that ain't hell. Just imagine what hell gonna be. Cause hell, the fire gonna be, the hell gonna be casting, definitely hell gonna be casting to the lake of fire. Yes, indeed. And I, you don't want to get it right. You don't want to try to do right with God. You want to get down your prayer line. Or you don't want to get to praying. You want to get to reading and studying. You want to have compassion on his people. Hey, how you think you're going to get the president done? You got to pray. That's how we got to do. You got to pray. The word of God and Mark said, if you pray and believe, that you re that you what you have you'll receive it and it'll be done, but you got to believe it first, and you got to pray it and then it'll be done. You got to ask, seek, and find, and he'll be he'll give it to you. But he can't give you nothing if you don't ask for nothing. As a father, as a mother, when you have kids, if they say something, they don't say nothing to you. You don't get them nothing. But the more they when they start after a while, you get tired of them begging. But you try to do the best you can. But if you know what they want, you try to get to them. So that's why God said, ask. So you ask, God, I need this. I, I want a closer walk with you, Father. I want to be closer to you, Lord. I don't, I don't want to be in the world no more. I want to be in your word. I want to be able to give you the praise and the glory and the honor that doing to your name. I want the manifestation of your word, God. I want to be able to walk, God. I want to be able to, when I walk, Father God, like I want them to see the word in me, on me. I want to understand that it's not me, but it's God in me. Because it's really not about us, but it's about God using us. See, our whole problem, we get a big head and get crazy thinking we all that. Oh, I done made it. Thank God I made it. You ain't as long as you down here, you ain't made it yet. Understand that. Because if you're down here, you're still trying to make it through. That's why you look up and say, God, I thank you. I think about uh, who is that? Uh, Stephen and Acts. When they were getting ready to stone him. And he looked up. Last, praising God and told him that he's almost like Jesus. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Who you think that is? There ain't nobody but God. Because ain't nowhere in the world. Deep. You gonna beat me up or you get ready to kill me? I'm a God. Forgive them. God, give me some power to help knock them back out. <laughs> help me, God, before I can just at least get some of it. Let me get a piece of something. 
Just don't let them take me out. But see, that's what Satan will do. Satan will get your mind all messed up. Make you think you're doing right. Make you think you're tough. Look how they're doing now. This don't make no sense. Every time you cut the TV on. Killing in Philadelphia yesterday. Cops just sitting there. They done got bold enough to go to the car, look at them, and shoot them. Sitting in the car. Kids going to a party. All they want to do is have a, well, they ain't got no business having a big party anyway. You ain't got no business having a big party anyway. But they went to the party. All of a sudden, shoot starts. People from 17 to 23 got shot. Three of them got killed. I said, what's going on, God? We got to pray. We got to stay on our knees. We got to have to come together. We can't come together physically, but spiritually, we need to come together on the phone. We, as we do, we need to pray all the time, talk to everybody. And I'm, I'm, you know, I, I told my wife, we, we, we're, we're blessed. We're blessing God. Because God has showed us favor. Even though we hurt some, we got some sickness. You understand what I'm saying? We ain't got problems. Sometimes my wife don't like me, I don't like her. Sometimes I got to say, what's going on? I'm in the house, she's in the house. We both together. She'll say, I don't, oh, we got to pray. That's why now I say, baby, we got to pray every morning. We get up before we do anything else. I say, we got to pray. We got to pray because the word of God is true. A family that pray together, stay together. Well, that's our word, God. I, we put that in there, but. God, you understand, right? Thank you, Holy Ghost. But that's what it is. You know, that's why we have to pray. And I realize the more I, I pray with her, the easier and better it is. Not I'm saying that we have our, that we have an argument and teeth and stuff fall out, we punch everybody. But look here, when you're in a closed wall and don't go out no more, can't do what you want to do, I'm just sitting there, you look at each other back and forth, Watching TV, you get so much of TV in you that you want to throw up. I can't even watch CNN like I, that's why I can't watch it like I used to. I used to sit down CNN. It was just like the Bible. Wake up, get my coffee, get the prayer. What you gonna watch? Oh, I done, I got so good I tape stuff. I sit there and watch stuff I taped on. I'm like, wow. And then all of a sudden, I sit there. It's like almost, you know how you got some kind of food and you eat it so much till you get tired of it. And then they bring it back to you again and you want to jerk, throw it up. That's what I am with, with that. I tell my wife, I got to stop. And they'll come, every time I stop, it pull me back in. Ah, oh, Lord, have mercy. Every time something happens, I got, oh, I got, next thing you know, here I go again. But I said, God, I thank you for giving me wisdom to understand. God said, look, you, you, you're too much into this. You, you're supposed to be in my word. That's where you're supposed to be at. If you got time, meditate on me then. And a lot of times I do that, we sit there, right? You sit there meditating on the word of God. They tell you, no, you sleep. <laughs> or something come up. Or you got to do something. Then you're like, well, God, what did I sit here for? I said, God, you got to show me. You got to, med you got to put the meditation in me. You got to help me, God, because I can't do it. Every time I try to meditate, God. Some come up. Or oh, I sit there, like I say, it don't make no difference. I sit there now, I'm some. I'm like, but if I'm watching TV, I'm so tired. I'm 
still looking. Ain't going to close my eyes because I don't want to miss nothing. That's how we should be in the word of God. We should not want to miss nothing as we read the word. We should want to get, we should want to grab everything. Like the word of God in John said, unless the seed fall down and die, it's bought alone. But if it die, it sprout up much fruit. So if we take the word of God and read it, it's going to sprout up. You'll find yourself looking up, walking different. You'll find yourself having compassion on your people. You'll find yourself humble, kind, gracious, loving. You'll find yourself doing things that you said you never would do. People that you said you never would talk to, you talk to them. People that you said you didn't like, you love them. Even the ones that persecute you. You know why? Because of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that lives in us. We don't live by ourselves. We live with the Holy Spirit. If you're a believer. If you're a believer, the word of God just have its way in you. It saturates us. And we go forth and do what needs to be done under the unction of the Holy Spirit. I, I was just thinking the other day when I as I was studying the word of God, I was thinking that he was putting it in my spirit. And I said, God, I thank you. And as I was reading, I was sitting out back, and I reading the word, my phone rung. And when my phone rung, I was talking to one of my brothers I, I used to work with. I don't work no more. Y'all know that, but I used to work. But I, he called me. And when he called me, we was talking. He said, well, I got something else I'm going to tell you. I said, what's that? He said, remember uh, uh, Deacon Stacy? I said, yeah, I remember Deacon Stacy. Well, I know, I know I had to remember. We sat right across from him almost 30 years. We prayed together, talked together. We did it, cried together, everything almost. I said, yeah. He said, well, his son got killed. In Pensacola, y'all might have heard on the news uh, two days ago, in Pensacola, got shot. And I said, whoa, what? I said, That's, I, you know, you can't question God. Because God will going to be done. But my thing was, I felt sorry for the wife, for the mother. Her name was Daisy. I felt sorry for her because she lost her son, about five years or six years ago, she lost her husband last year, and now she lost her son, her other son, her only son, the last one. I said, now that's go three of them. What is it, Naomi? I said, that sounds like Naomi to me. Lost all her to, 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 to her husband and her two kids. I said that, and I looked at my wife, I said, we blessed. I'm not, I'm not proud of God, somebody, people dying. I said, well, we're blessed. I said, we're still here. Our kids are still healthy and reasonable. The body of Christ is still here. We're still walking, talking, and doing. That's why I have to pray. You got to pray every day for your kids. Make sure you might not going to, you ain't going to do nothing wrong, hopefully, but you don't know what the kids are doing. That's why they got to keep them up in prayer. We don't know where they at or who they do or what they doing or who they doing it to or what they doing. That's why we got to pray, God, keep them safe. Your children, your grandchildren, your great-grand, all of them. You got to keep them in prayer because we don't know what's going on. And I said, Lord, I said, my wife, I said, See, we, we, we know real God. I said, I thank God. Mm, mm, mm. <sighs> because of his grace and his mercy. I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. I call on the name of Jesus. Morning, noon. And night. I walk around the house. My wife don't hear me because I mean, I, I don't just uh, uh, go crazy. I, I'm not trying to act like I'm a, you know, a Jesus freak, you know what I mean? Like you, 
Like I used to come get to every time you see somebody, you get, oh, yeah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But I be in my mind. Amen. Jesus. 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 Woo, Jesus. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. What a wonderful name. Howdy, yeah, yeah, yeah. No other name whereby we can be saved. But the name of Jesus. When you call on the name of Jesus, you'll feel differently. Just for 20, 30 seconds. Let's do that. Jesus. Jesus, 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 glory, Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, thank you, thank you, Father, glory, hallelujah, oh, yes, Lord, you worthy, Lord. You're worthy to be praised, O oh Heavenly Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Because we thank you, God. We know we can't do it on our own. But we know, Father God, that we can do all things, all things, all things through Christ Jesus. See, you can't do it on your own. But you can do it through Jesus. You can call on him. And he'll hear you. You can seek him while he can be found. He said, I'm not hiding. Say, so I'm sitting high and looking low. That's why we have to look up because he's looking down. He's looking down to see what you need. If you tell him, God, I need you. I need wisdom. I need knowledge and understanding. I need more compassion on your people, Lord. I need your love, oh, Heavenly Father. I need more. You can't get more faith because all you need is a little faith. You get to take a little faith, as small as a mustard seed. That faith will grow. It'll be the biggest tree and the biggest flower you ever had in your life. Because with that faith in you, it just gives you the covering that you need. God the glory that do unto his name. He said in his word, cast all your cares at my feet. Why? Because he cared for us. He cared for us. Who you know will tell you that? Give me all your troubles. Whatever it is, give it to me. I'll take care of it. Because he is God and God all alone. And he all power, all knowing, all sin. So he can do it. We'll take people, the people talk to you. Think about how people talk to you and put their trouble on you. After a while, you get bogged down. You start getting miserable yourself. Not Jesus. He right there to love us. All we have to do is humble ourselves and pray. And he will hear from heaven. And forgive our sin. And heal our land. He'll heal your body. This is nothing but dirt. He'll heal it. You, if you're hurting, he'll heal it. He'll, you trust him, he would take care. You might have to go to the doctor. Might have to get operated on everything else. But he'll take care of it. Amen. The word of God say, with the many of the afflictions of the righteous. <laughs> but he'll deliver us out of them all. Amen. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right, I'm, I'm going to go now. I'm going to close down. I'm going to take you right here. We're going to go to Psalm 24. I'm going to go to this from 7 to 10. 
<laughs> Mother, I heard you online this morning. And when you when your prayer, I said, listen, Mom, because God had gave me that, and I heard you come out, and when Mother came online this morning, her reading was Psalm 24. Amen. So I'm going to read this 7 to 10. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and a king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord is strong and mighty. The Lord is mighty in battle. Look at that. God do the biting. He do the fighting. All we have to do is just stand and wait on the salvation of the Lord and see it and trust in it. Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and lift them up, your everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord is strong and mighty. The Lord is mighty in battle. I uh, say, God, the Lord is strong and mighty, mighty in battle. God don't need us to do no fight for him. He do all the fight himself, but he can. He want us to, have to be in that, be there to see what he doing. We got to know that he is the one. Whatever we doing, we doing it through him. We are not doing it on ourselves. That's like Isaiah. Isaiah, when he said, I look up, when I looked up, I saw the year that I was use Isaiah. I looked up and I saw the Lord high his train filled the temple. You got to understand, that's why we got to look up to trust in God. We got to know it ain't about us, but it's about God having his way in us. We're supposed to lay, every, uh, lay aside every weight of a sin that's thus so easily beset us so that we can run the race that is set before us. Look into Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy of the cross he endured, but he despised the same. That's who we look up to. I look up to somebody who took my sin and put it on his shoulder. I look up to someone that took my debt and paid it. That I don't have to go to the credit man. I'll go out now. I want to get me a car. He tell me you can't get it. I want to buy me a house. He tell you you can't have it. I want to go out and get something else, whatever I want. He tell me you can't have it. But I got to get it because God already paid the price. He paid the price. We didn't. He did. And being he paid the price, we had to give him the glory, had to give him the honor, had to praise him with everything we had. I know the word, this one psalm to say if I had 10, I think it was psalm say one, if I had 10,000 hands, if I had a man hand, I'd praise him with everyone. If I had, if I could do anything else, I'd praise him. Praise is what I do. Mm, mm, mm. Give him the glory because he's worthy. He's worthy of all praise and all the glory. We thank him. We didn't have, look here, we came out here from a Chisahurst. We didn't have to make it up here in uh, Franklinville. We could have broke down, had accident. We don't know anything could have happened, but we all made it. That's why we praise the Lord. We give him the glory and honor due unto his name. And we got to remember, too, it ain't because you're good. There's none good but one, Jesus told him. Jesus told him, I'm not even good but the Father. So don't think that because you all, you, you're doing a little something, you think you're all good. No. Because when you think you're all good, you think you ain't got to do no more work. And we got to work. We still have to seek God. We still have to look up to God. We still have to look up the Scriptures. We still have to look up and see what we have to do. 
Because the Holy Ghost will lead you. He will guide you. He'll mold us and shape us too. If you let him. But you got to let him. You got to be willing to let God have his way in you. We got to be willing to say, God, for God I live and for God I die. We got to understand that it really is not about us, but about God having his way in us. And we thank him. We thank him for truly blessing. We thank him for each and every one of you. We thank him for the hedge of protection and traveling mercy. We thank him for favor. Because if it weren't for favor, we wouldn't be here. The word of God says you write truth and mercy on the table of your heart. How I write it on the table of my heart by studying his word and letting it soak in me. And around my neck, be put it on my brain <laughs> and use it. And use it the way he wants me to use it. And in some as we both be Christian, how we don't let the word of God try do what it wants to do in us. We got we let it do so much and after a while, yeah, that's enough. Stop it. But no, we're gonna let God have his way in us. No matter what it is. And we're going to still bless each and every. We're asking to keep blessing everybody. Save and unsaved. Because remember one time, we was unsaved. But God still blessed us. Gave us a chance to get it right with him. So we pray for those that are unsaved. In the name of Jesus, I pray y'all got something out of that. Right. Man, I was, uh, we still had 10 seats vacant for those that still had wanted to come, so we still have room. <laughs> Amen. Elder, excellent job. Look up. Look up. Glory to God. One day we're going to look up and see him coming. Amen. In the clouds, before we know it, boom, in the twinkling of an eye. Glory to God. I told you, I'm coming back riding with him now. Amen. I'm going to be riding with him. Amen. I have a remedy, Elder, for, uh, for CNN. I, I watch it, and then I'll turn to Fox News and let it balance itself out. <laughs> It'll balance itself right out. Amen. You can look at so much CNN and MSNBC. Turn to Fox News. Fox News is just, boom, flip the card. You say, you know, I don't want to watch none of it because I don't believe in too much of them. Amen. I, I want to tell you this, praise God. I've been praying for the election. I've been really praying for the election. God is going to put the person in place that needs to be in place. I believe he's done it so far. When he put President Obama, it, I, I couldn't see a, uh, a man of color getting in office as soon as he did. But he got in, and, and he made us proud. I will say this. That man made us proud, man. I was very proud. And I praise God for the ticket with the uh, Biden ticket because we might have a black sister riding in the seat. Glory to God. Now, a sister might take it home. I don't know. Glory to God. It's, it's really a, 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 an interesting time. I was also looking, praise God, billionaires made more money than they made in a long time. Amen. In six months, uh, they made over $73 billion. Million, billionaires are making money. I don't know. We, we might not be making the money, but the billionaires are making it. <clears throat> Had four Waltons on there. The Walton family was tearing it up. So they're making money. Money's being made. For those that don't think there's no money out there, ask the billionaire. They'll tell you, there is God. They're taking all your money. So we thank God that. But I tell you what, I, I will say this for me. I've, I've driven as much as I wanted to drive. My refrigerator freezers are full. God is blessing the food bank. We had so much bread. If a person came by here yesterday and said they were hungry, praise God. They'd, if they left, they'd have been lying if they said they were still hungry because food was here. Uh, the food bank was flourishing. 
Praise God. We even was giving away stuff there at the, uh, at the yard sale. So God is blessing. I'm looking, what one thing I am looking for, praise God, is for Jesus to come back. And I am pra praising God for that. Again, too, this pandemic is really, uh, I I'm going to say this because you really need to hear this for those. I want to, first of all, ap I appreciate everyone on the prayer line. I, I, I thank you, praise God, because as showing a connection, uh, and, and that's very important for those that are not on the prayer line. I think it would behoove you to get on it because it will connect you because right now there is being a laxity of mind in the church. People are getting too comfortable staying at home. Amen. You, you get downright uh, uh, spiritually lazy. Spiritually, uh, uh, yeah. I can't put it any better way. Lazy. Uh, turning on the TV and just watching and saying you fulfilled. You can say that. But praise God, your Bible reading is lax. Amen. You don't have to tell me. I know the deal. Because whenever you're not put into a pressure, you just act accordingly. How many know that be the truth? If, I, if I'm not doing, I just adjust and do what I do. And I'm going to tell you what, this pandemic is what it is. But I seen more people at uh, Home Depot yesterday. If there was a pandemic, Home Depot wasn't telling me. Because that parking lot was full. We went there yesterday to pick up something, me and Joe Wells, and he said, man, it's, <laughs> we, we found a parking spot, but I'm going to tell you what, if there's a pandemic, the world don't know it. I'll put it that way. <laughs> the church knows it more than the world knows it because we have sense, but I'll tell you, thank God for that. I want to also say there's, uh, we have a candidate running here in the township of Franklinville. I can't tell you to vote for, but uh, his, uh, his mother's one of our good friends, and, uh, and I want you to see if you're in the Franklin Township area, look at the the uh, post, and we got a good brother running. We got some good people running, but I definitely want you to see that name, and uh, we want to encourage. I don't know if I can mention names. I, I don't because I don't, but I do want to let you know that there is some good people running, and I want you to be encouraged in that. Amen? Let's stand and go home. Amen. Again, thank you for all those on the prayer line. And I'm not just saying that to say it. I'm saying because it takes a commitment to take out that time to say, okay. And the Sunday school, my God. Amen. If you didn't know you was uh, at home sitting there drinking coffee or whatever you're drinking, you think we're here at New Life. Well, them folk was dealing with Sunday. Am I right, Alder? They, they doing an excellent job, everyone. And I don't want to not miss. I want to thank Crystal for her dedication and Daphne Wesley. Wes, Wes ain't missing a beat. If, there, if there's a problem with crossing that bridge, Wesley ain't having it. because, yeah, And that means a lot because we have other musicians. We have other people. But that brother is here every Sunday if he's, if he's participating or not. Am I right? So you got to give, you know, uh, honor to whom honor is due. And Crystal has not missed a beat Wednesday and Sunday. Crystal was here just like everything was the same as same. And I thank you. So now let's go home. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your people everywhere. We pray for every church, every pastor, every uh, clergy person. And we ask God, all the laity, and we ask that you stir up the minds of your people. And give us to know that, praise God, even with the pandemic, you're still God. And we honor you for it. Now say this with me, if you will. May the Lord bless you and, and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you shalom peace. In closing, praise God, I want to let you know and I want you to give yourself a round of applause. We paid this church off, praise God. This church is paid off. We will have a mortgage burning as soon as we can get in and everybody, we want to celebrate, but we will have a mortgage burning. This church, and I want to say this just right quick, I, I did a calculation Praise God, to rebuild this building with nothing on the inside, just the walls, would be $846,000. Just to put this building back up, $846,000. Nothing on the inside and no stone on the outside. So if you just put this brick building up, praise God, as high as it is, $846,000. When I say supernatural people doing supernatural things, God bless your hearts, praise God. Say this with me, if you will, what I say to one. 
I say unto all, watch, pray, live holy, and love one another. Now go in peace and go with God. God bless his people.